This week's podcast is sponsored by MPB, the platform to buy, sell and trade used photo and video kit. MPB has the UK's largest range of used photo and video kit with over 10,000 products on their platform. Go to www.mpb.com to find out more. Hello and welcome to the AV Forums podcast for Monday, the 12th of September 2022. And this is not the normal podcast. This is a pre-recorded podcast as the team is currently on holiday at the moment. Uh, the normal podcast will return on the 26th of September along with the movies podcast. So don't hang around for the movies podcast this week. It's not here. It will return on the 26th along with the normal AV podcast in this episode. I want to get to know the TV company TCL a little bit better. I've just received uh, one of their TVs for review, which is behind me. That's the C735. And we're also going to look at two more TVs um, in the next few weeks. So to navigate my way around the models for 2022 and a regular on AV forums, if you uh, watch our videos from CES and uh, IFA and other events, uh, you'll know the person who's on the podcast with me. Say hello to Marek. Match Jubeski. Now, I always get your surname wrong, so apologies if I did that <laughs> on this occasion. Uh, but welcome. Yeah, to the it's podcast. not easy. <laughs> well, not when you've got a Scottish accent as well. It all goes all over the place, really. So, um, Marek, you're the product development ma- uh, director for Europe. Is that correct? Yes, I am product development director for Europe uh, at TCL. Excellent. So, we're going to start tonight. We're going to go through uh, the TCL range. Basically, we're going to have a conversation. Uh, we're not going to deep dive too much in this episode. Um, we're going to cover all the features of the TVs. Uh, we're going to cover everything about the models um, coming to the UK and Europe this year. Uh, we're going to save the deep dive for a future podcast, probably in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, we'll come back. We'll also ask you uh, to ask your questions. You know, what do you want to know about TCL? What do you want to know about the technologies? I should also have reviewed the TVs uh, by that point. So we'll have a a much better understanding of the models by then. And uh, we'll deep dive and get really technical on that podcast. In this podcast, Malik, I just really want to go through uh, the lineup um, for this year. But perhaps there are people out there who are still not familiar uh, with TCL and how big the company is. So maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about TCL. Uh, TCL is uh, on the market since, uh, I think, uh, 40 years uh, already. In Europe, we are present uh, since uh, 2007 directly as TCL. As of today, we have 120,000 employees uh, on a worldwide uh, basis. Uh, we uh, very quickly develop uh, in Europe, uh, we develop uh, in UK, uh, you'll see our products uh, more and more. Uh, we are number one, number two in USA, so uh, here uh, in US uh, we already achieve uh, significant market presence. And uh, in Europe, market by market, it depends. In France, uh, we are uh, much uh, above, I think, 12 or uh, 13% market share. On other markets, we quickly grow. In TCL, we do TVs, uh, we do audio products, uh, we do IoT products, we do also white goods and air conditioning. Uh, air conditioning, so uh, all product categories you can have today uh, at home. No. Do you buy products in and make the TVs, or is everything manufactured by TCL? Uh, The principle of uh, TCL success is vertical integration. Vertical integration for us means that uh, every key components uh, which are used in our products are manufactured by us. So for TVs, we manufacture panels, and as this is a key component, and all technologies which are around panels, to make the TV and the same logic uh, we apply for all other product categories. So we don't, we are not ODM. Uh, we uh, fully develop uh, master technologies, uh, produce all key uh, core components and make products. And when that comes to the insides of the TVs, such as HDMI 2.1 compatibility on the silicon and so on, is, is that under your control or is that third party? Well, uh, if you look on the silicon or on chipset, so then there is always a debate on uh, using uh, or developing uh, chipsets. 
and uh, I think uh, uh, still uh, in this area we can find very good uh, chipset suppliers on the market. And uh, for the for the time being, uh, all our products uh, are based on uh, chipsets uh, provided by uh, silicon uh, suppliers, same as uh, other A brands. Because whatever product you will open and go deeply inside, you will see that uh, usually there are three major chipset suppliers which are used by TV vendors. Now, uh, some of the users out there, some of the AV Forums members will be uh, aware of TCL. Um, they will have seen your sets uh, launched at events like, I say, CES and, and IFA in the past and so on. One criticism, Marek, that has been raised in the past, and I'm wondering if you can maybe tell us the reasoning, is uh, differences between regions. Um, the US is different to the UK, is different to Europe. Why are there differences between the different areas when it comes to, well, basically what should be the same TV? Uh, when you look on the market, uh, well, let's say uh, you talk about TV. So generally all TVs we do are uh, kind of modular design. And uh, then uh, uh, if you do all the details uh, and uh, product, you will see that uh, picture quality specification, many specifications are uh, very similar or the same. Uh, design might be a bit different because uh, there are markets like US where uh, products are sold without soundbar, built in soundbar, and markets like Europe where built in soundbar in some markets is a key benefit for product. Uh, then you come to the standards uh, which are on the market and the way how products are operated and also market share of operating systems. And uh, then uh, this one makes uh, the difference as uh, we use uh, different platforms to drive these products. But uh, if we go from my perspective and uh, look on these products uh, uh, for different markets, you will see that there are many similarities. There is different naming. Uh, different naming in US comes from the fact that uh, this uh, naming was uh, applied for the market and is used since a long time uh, for all other areas except China, we have uh, unified naming. And uh, he, this one can only create uh, some uh, misunderstanding from end user perspective. Now, what is the philosophy um, of TCL when it comes to TV? Who is uh, the market that you are aiming at? Is, is it the enthusiast market like AV Forums members or is it the, the whole of, of the market? Do you have a product for everybody? When you look on the TCL product, so uh, we started from uh, many years ago from uh, entry market and uh, then uh, products. So today I can uh, call this segment streaming market. So we uh, provided uh, access to streaming and the streaming TPO applications and uh, standard TV experience. And then step by step, what we call democratization of technologies. We were adding functionalities, which uh, at uh, the moment we decided to add this functionality was only associated with high-end products. So this happened to QLED, this happened to Dolby Vision, this happened to uh, Dolby Atmos, then Mini LED. So with Mini LED, we were the first uh, on the market in uh, 2019. And step by step, uh, we uh, were pushing down to uh, the, this functionalities also to deliver performance and to deliver uh, features to enthusiasts. Uh, and that's why I think we talk right now. Now, when you look at the marketplace, um, it's, it is crowded out there. So what do you think uh, makes your product stand out from the competition? Is it pricing? Are, are, are you undercutting the market or is it in features? Are you bringing features to market that other manufacturers can't bring? I from our perspective, it is uh, for sure performance uh, we are focused on. And uh, uh, if you look uh, since uh, I think uh, 2019, so 2019 was the first year of uh, best value for us. So we were focusing on the best value and the step by step we were pushing uh, up to 21 was uh, uh, generally the first year with uh, huge mass production of uh, mini LED products like C825 and very successful product. And this year uh, we uh, further uh, push uh, towards uh, performance uh, functionalities and uh, uh, 2,500 needs and uh, 2,000 dimming zones. So 
this is uh, the direction we go, as I said, uh, two years ago from uh, entry products and uh, products delivering resolution and uh, access to streaming, uh, up to through best value, up to performance, and uh, this uh, simply the best segment. Now, before we go any further, I think the obvious question um, people are going to want me to ask is, uh, we are talking about LCD TVs here, whether LED TVs, QLED, mini LED, um, no sign of OLED. Um, is OLED in your roadmap? Is that something that TCL is developing? Uh, this year, uh, when you look on the TCL range, uh, we are focused on mini LED as we believe that uh, mini LED is the technology uh, which is able to deliver performance and also outperform in many areas uh, light emissive screens. Uh, if you look on what we show as technology development, so uh, during uh, different technology demos and uh, uh, meetings, uh, we show uh, IGP inkjet printed uh, OLED, RGB OLED uh, screens, uh, and uh, we uh, started development of the FAP uh, factory in Shenzhen, uh, which is 8.5 generation uh, factory, which we built for this IGP OLED uh, printing. And uh, this one is uh, still uh, in development process. So uh, light emissive screens are on the table. Our technologies are developed. We also produce this kind of screens for mobile phones. But here you know that the technology is slightly different. But uh, technology is uh, mastered. But today is very difficult to answer uh, when exactly we will introduce this kind of products to the market. Excellent. So that's something that we can certainly keep an eye on um, as the things progress. So let's wind back to this year. Let's have a look at some of the, the models that you are releasing in the UK and uh, find out a little bit more about them. Now, Marek, my understanding is that the uh, the C-series is, is the top line for your um, LCD TVs this year, some mini LED and QLED TV. So maybe we start there. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your flagship model this year. This year, our flagship uh, range is uh, C935. This is this uh, TV set is uh, made uh, is using uh, mini LED uh, technology. A mini LED, to be honest, uh, for us is not just only backlight, uh, but it's just the concept of the product uh, where we use uh, together backlight with uh, peak brightness and also a number of ozones. Uh, we use uh, quantum dot enhancement film to deliver colors. Uh, we use uh, also a very high uh, contrast of uh, the screen, uh, LCD screen. This year uh, it's uh, 7000 to 1, which is a significant uh, achievement for this kind of technology. And of course, anti reflection coating. So, by putting all together these elements together with uh, driving, and uh, he this year is high speed driving. So, your uh, famous uh, X, X, uh, X parat, uh, or uh, in other words, uh, moving peppers uh, won't have trail behind. So this is just uh, the package of technologies we called mini LED uh, this year. And starting from flagship products, see 935 uh, in terms of peak brightness, 2,500 nits. Uh, in terms of number of zones, uh, we talk about 1,000 zones for 65 and uh, 2000, almost 2000 zones for 75 uh, inch. Uh, then in terms of uh, HDR supported, so all HDR formats are supported, including Dolby Vision IQ. So we sense ambient light. Uh, then in terms of upscaling, uh, here we talk about artificial intelligence, uh, deep learning super resolution, uh, which help us uh, to achieve uh, excellent upscaling effects and also uh, the contour. Uh, so you won't see any steps or, or gradual uh, gradual steps uh, on the screen. And then of course, uh, here at this level, we talk about uh, 144 Hertz up to 144 Hertz for HDMI input. And in terms of motion, which is uh, coming from uh, any other content, uh, they blur each other up to 100 20 hertz. So this is just uh, the picture specification of this uh, uh, flagship product. Uh, then in terms of audio quality, uh, here we talk about uh, 212. So we have, up, we have up firing speakers, we have front firing speakers to better reproduce Atmos. 
Then in terms of uh, smart, uh, this product comes with Google TV, uh, both for Europe and for UK. Uh, then in terms of uh, other connectivity functionalities, AirPlay 2 is also part of the specification. So if you have your iOS device, you can easily connect and use it. Then uh, you have hands-free, so you can use your voice to control TV. You can uh, press the button on the remote, and you can uh, stream use uh, voice streaming uh, to the TV set. And uh, in terms of gaming, this is another area we are focused. As I said, uh, up to 144 hertz with 5 milliseconds uh, input lag in game mode, and also certified by Stadia. So, I mean... It it seems like it has absolutely everything on there. And it's nice to see DTS uh, support as well, um, which seems to be something that other manufacturers have, have forgotten about um, when it comes to, to audio. Um, one of the questions I, I do have for you is when it comes to the processing and, and the algorithm that you use for the local dimming, how much R&D has gone into that? Because um, it doesn't matter, I don't think, how many zones you have and how many you know pixel areas you have. It's how you control those um, that gives you the the image at the end of the day and how well you use uh, that technology. So, what is it that you have on board that makes uh, your algorithms uh, work in, in a particular way to give you the image quality? As I said, uh, if you look on uh, polar eye local dimming, so yes, uh, zones we can discuss. So I always say that. Uh, Mathematically and looking from your eye perspective, if your eye is able to recognize contrast zone every four degrees, so in theory you need 144 zones to cover the screen. But uh, the point starts from the fact that uh, full array local dimming you uh, use together with LCD screen in front, and then you can use LCD screen, which is uh, using IPS technology with 1000 to 1. And if you use thousands of zones, nothing will help this uh, screen to look better. You can use VA screen, what we use uh, on TCL side. We, uh, we call it HVA. And uh, here over last few years, from 2019, we improved static contrast from 3,000 to 1. This year, we achieved 7,000 to 1. So this is the first point, zones together with uh, static contrast of uh, the screen. And then uh, the next point is driving. You can uh, drive uh, in uh, different ways. Uh, focus this year on our site was uh, direct driving and uh, very fast uh, response. So what you will notice, as I said, during your test, when you play Spirits and Moonseal, famous uh, Peppers moving uh, test, you will see there is no light trail behind uh, whatever moves on the screen. And uh, then in terms of years of uh, development, first the full array local dimming products we started to introduce in China uh, in 2010. Uh, these products were very top end products and uh, we continue to master uh, algorithms for both uh, motion and uh, full array uh, local dimming uh, controlling. Excellent. So I'm looking forward to testing these. That's the flagship. Um, and we will have a review of that one. The 65 inch should be coming uh, into AV forums in the next few weeks. Uh, so let's move down a little. Oh, hang on. Let's cover the pricing lag. That's the important bit. Um, so I understand the 65 inch will be £1,499 or uh, £1,899. Euro, and the 75 inch is £2,299 or €2,799. Euros. Um, so that's for that model. So let's move down. The C835, um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about this model. So uh, the product uh, versus the previous one is having uh, slightly lower peak brightness of uh, 1,500 peaks. And uh, then is having uh, less dimming zones uh, as uh, here uh, we go down to 100. So 360 zones for 75 inch, 288 for 65, and the one 240 for 55 inch. Here we enter a slightly different uh, price point levels, but in terms of all other functionalities, uh, the product is using same technologies as uh, this uh, uh, higher ranked brother of uh, C935. Then the last difference is audio, because uh, in C9935, uh, we had uh, two on two with front firing built in sandbar and up firing. 
and in this one in C835 we have 2.1. And that's all because all the rest, the uh, screen uh, anti-reflection and so on is exactly the same. Also 500 milliseconds input lag, 144 hertz for uh, HDMI input. And just touching on the sound again, I, I think we missed this on the 935 as well. Um, is this Onkyo sound that's on the, the TVs? Is that carrying over yes, this year? Uh, yes. So uh, the, if we go to the details, so yes, uh, we uh, use uh, Onkyo audio for all products for uh, C93, C83, and also uh, for uh, some products uh, below. Okay, excellent. And the TV that's sitting behind me, um, the one that's coming first for review is the 735. I've got the 55 inch behind me. So uh, maybe we can quickly touch on uh, the features that this TV has that I'm going to be looking at. Uh, so the product you have behind you, C735, uh, here we covered uh, the wide uh, uh, number of sizes, starting from 98 to 85, 75, 65, 65. All these products are uh, with uh, 120 hertz. Uh, even 98 is with uh, almost 200 uh, dimming zones, as we said that the screen is too large to be a uh, global uh, uh, dimming uh, screen. All other sizes are global dimming. So here is the first difference. Uh, that uh, uh, brightness is uh, here around uh, 350 nits for all sizes, except 98 where uh, we achieve in peak 800 nits. In terms of uh, HDR technologies, in terms of uh, also motion, uh, uh, so we have uh, same uh, features as in previous uh, two products, C93 and C83, as all, as I said, are 120 hertz. Uh, for 75, 65, 55, we can even do up to 140 hertz, 44 hertz over HDMI. So. Still very good product. We believe very good product also for gaming. Uh, if you uh, see this uh, static contrast of this product, you should be very surprised uh, how is uh, the black feeling even on this kind of products. In terms of uh, features and in terms of uh, smart TV, this is Google TV product. As I said, uh, with uh, also with AirPlay 2 so, and the Chromecast, so whatever mobile device you have, you can uh, connect to this screen. And uh, as I also said, C93, C83, C73, uh, Google TV for Europe and also for UK. And you said it's uh, it's global uh, dimming on this TV, so not local dimming, um, but it is 55 inch coming in at 600 pounds. So was that a consideration as, as to why this set is global dimming rather than local dimming? Uh, this, at this price point, uh, we uh, believe that uh, this is uh, a very good uh, proposal. Uh, as I said, uh, knowing uh, static contrast of the screen, uh, 7,000 to 1. And uh, then uh, there is uh, still, uh, you see uh, the gap, uh, clear gap uh, between 55, C735 and uh, C835. And then uh, we will see uh, next year if we need uh, one more product in between. But you know perfectly that uh, local dimming uh, makes sense uh, above 100 zones, below 100 zones, uh, effect is almost not visible. Uh, so just to do local dimming for 100 zones or even less zones, to call it local dimming without visible effects on the screen, for us it doesn't make sense. Yeah, okay. Uh, and of course, uh, screen sizes, like you say, 55, 65, 75, 85, and 98, uh, that is huge. Um, but again, £4,000 for a 98-inch screen. Um, you really are pushing the boundaries there when it comes to real estate. And we believe, you know, honestly, that uh, you can, if you look on this product, as I said, this the difference in 98 is that we have 200 dimming zones and uh, 800 nits of uh, peak brightness. But uh, when you really sit in front and together with a uh, sandbar, uh, you can easily cover 60 degrees of viewing angle. So you cover everything your eyes can see. You have a feeling that you are in the cinema. And then you start uh, to see, to think if really Beamer makes sense. Because with Beamer, you need screen, you need the installation and so on. You will never achieve uh, with Beamer this kind of uh, 
uh, picture quality because you yeah. have to cover windows and here just you install and uh, you have your uh, private cinema yeah you do indeed and it's it's certainly it is going to challenge projectors going forward um, when we get screen and if you want it. if you want i can send you really if you want uh, you can test in uh, your I, I, I don't think i'll get a 98 inch through the door <laughs> unfortunately i might have to come to you to look at this one um but yeah it, it looks like it's going to be impressive uh, just one other thing before we move on from the 735 is the 43 and 50 inch now uh, my understanding is they're available in europe but not the uk is that correct Yes, these products are available for uh, some specific customers, but uh, uh, these two products are based on different platform, are not 100 hertz, uh, and uh, uh, there are also some uh, other differences. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, for UK, uh, we don't do them. But okay. these products won't be also available on all markets, only on select markets. Now, uh, wrapping up the C series is the 635, so um, I am guessing that this is the entry level, looking at the prices, 43-inch, uh, 50, 55, 65, 75, um, the 75 coming in just over £1,000, so again, great value, so what uh, features are we getting on this TV? Uh, here, as we said, it's great value, or we also call it uh, best value. Uh, we continue QLED story, so then all products uh, uh, coming uh, from the top uh, down to the C635 are uh, QLED uh, based, so uh, 100 color volume. And uh, here uh, we have a global dimming, uh, so with the brightness uh, 300 uh, something uh, close to 400 nits, it depends uh, product by product. Uh, in terms of HDR, Dolby Vision is uh, part of uh, the product, HDR 10+. Plus, uh, and uh, uh, then the uh, panel is a 60 hertz panel, but with motion interpolation. So if you uh, like uh, or you need mo motion interpolation, you can use it. Atmos and uh, 20 Onkyo down firing is uh, also on board. And then we have two versions. So one version is for Europe, which is Google TV. Another version is for UK, which is Android TV together with Preview Play. Uh, why uh, no Google TV with Preview Play? Because uh, uh, still uh, there is uh, uh, Preview Play uh, works with Google on uh, transferring uh, its applications to uh, Google uh, operating uh, system. And in terms of gaming functionalities, the C635 uh, comes also with 120 Hertz Full HD option. So in 75, 65, 55, uh, you can use it if you want. You have also VRR as uh, in uh, all our products. Excellent. So that's the C series covered. Um, now there are models below that. Um, and again, we're getting more into the uh, the better value end of the market um, with the Roku TV, and you have also have some 4K LED LCD TVs. Now we do have an article on AV forums uh, that you can go and look at. It's on the homepage uh, that covers all the models in detail, giving you the features and so on. And a lot of what we've covered here uh, today is also in that article. So you can go and have a look at that. It's on the homepage. If it's not on the homepage, if you just look in the editorial section, you will find it quite quickly. Um, and of course, we've got what, these uh, articles for all the manufacturers out there. But uh, for TCL, if you want to find out more about TCL, that's a great place to head and to read that um i just want to stick with the c series just for the time being Marek, because um i've just been going through the menu system on this one preparing it um for review and i noticed that it has direct display control on there which hints at uh being able to do kalman 3d loot uh calibration is am i correct in that assumption yeah, you are correct. So uh, Kalman project is uh, ongoing uh, for to cover C93, C83, and C73. Uh, for uh, Kalman project, uh, we uh, want to provide uh, complete uh, calibration uh, solution. So starting from HDR, uh, sorry, SDR, HDR10, HDR10 Plus, Dolby Vision, and HLG. Uh, for 1D and 3D LUT project, I think uh, is uh, almost uh, finished uh, with uh, final certification to be done by Portrait. But uh, once it will be done, we will provide you a software update because uh, in the software you have not all functionalities. I think 3D LUT might uh, still face some issues. 
and then we will be able to discuss again because uh, then it's a kind of PhD story. You can uh, describe a lot uh, about uh, implementing uh, Kalman and uh, how you think uh, it works uh, and uh, how at the, end, at the end you do it because the project is fully managed by one of my engineers in Europe. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, that project being ready to test. And, and of course, it's great to see this functionality um, being available on TVs, even, even at these price points. Now, the final question I do have for you is filmmaker mode. Uh, I do notice that your TVs don't have the filmmaker mode. Is this something that uh, TCL will get involved with? Because I think it's been a great success across the whole industry. Um, lots of manufacturers have picked up on, on having a filmmaker mode, which is a, an easy one button press for the end user. Is it something that you're considering? Uh, this one that we discussed and uh, we had a uh, very advanced discussion with uh, our uh, US colleagues uh, on it uh, to do or not to do filmmaker mode. Uh, one of the issue we noticed uh, with uh, filmmaker mode was uh, in fact uh, very high brightness of the TV set and a very large screen. And uh, uh, when you have uh, this kind of uh, super dynamic range uh, content running in uh, 24p and the camera is moving or uh, there is uh, a fast motion on the screen. So then uh, it was a bit uh, annoying. Uh, so for the time being, uh, we see our movie mode uh, as uh, in fact uh, also providing uh, exactly the same uh, functionality. On top of this, uh, we also provide uh, IMAX enhanced, which is uh, another clean mode uh, uh, inside TV set. So uh, for the time being, uh, filmmaker mode is uh, being discussed, but uh, it's not something which on which I can commit will come as a sort of software update. Okay. Well, I think uh, in general terms, I think we've learned a lot uh, in this podcast about TCL. Thank you very much, Marek, for coming along and explaining it. Like I say, uh, we will have a follow-up to this. So if you've got any questions um, for Marek about uh, TCL models, about technology, about what might be coming down the line in the years ahead, anything really, um, then do send them in. It's podcast at avforums.com. Uh, email probably will be the best because that'll be the easiest for us to collate for a future podcast. But you can also leave your questions under this podcast in the podcast forum at AV Forums. You'll find that in the forum list. You move right down to the bottom and it's just above the feedback forum at the bottom of the page. Uh, go in there, find this episode of the podcast and leave your questions in there. And like I say, we will arrange a date. We'll let you know uh, when that will be, but probably six to eight weeks time. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to review the TVs, uh, completely independent, of course, as always. Uh, but it's always great to get Marek's input uh, at the beginning, like we always do with CES and IFA. We, we like to hear what the manufacturer think the product's going to be. And then, of course, we will uh, put those uh, claims to the test. And, and when we come back, we'll discuss those in a future podcast. But Marek, thank you very much for your time. Phil, thank you also very much uh, for your time, for all your questions, uh, interview, and uh, I hope to see you at IFA, and uh, then uh, hope to see you again and to answer whatever question will come. As you know, there is uh, no question uh, I cannot answer. Okay, well, there you go. There's a challenge. Mike says there's no question he can't answer. Get your questions in. Let's get them asked. Um, if you've enjoyed this podcast, then please do give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget, we also have an AV Forums podcast channel. It's a separate channel. Uh, why not go and subscribe to that? There you will find uh, cut down versions of the main podcast. So if it's just specific areas that you're interested in, you will find videos covering just those areas on our AV Forums podcast channel. So go and subscribe to that. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You can bookmark avforums.com for latest reviews, news and videos. And of course, if if you're listening to us uh, a little bit later in the week, audio only or whatever, uh, whichever provider you're listening through, if they allow you to rate the podcast, then please do consider rating it highly. I'm Phil Hinton. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And remember to join us again on the 26th of September for the normal podcast. Good night. Thank you.